And I have to give credit to a fellow in Texas that came up with the concept. And these are sanding disc holders. And the fellow is Bill George at Denton Turner's. And he was on the internet and he, he shared something similar to this. I took it a little further. And what we want to do is we want to start off with a um, piece of wood. Uh, this one happens to be mahogany. And Larry, have you got those bits up there on uh, the yeah. screen? Okay. You go to Harbor Freight. All right. Favorite place besides Grizzly. Um, buy this type of set because they're all hexagonal all the way almost to the tip. If you buy them that are two inches that are round, you're going to end up putting the round end in there, and it may not hold as well as the hexagonal. Hexagonal is great. Now, when you put that in there, you want to drill a quarter inch hole or maybe something a little bit bigger if it's solid wood and it's really hard because sometimes it will split. Baltic, Baltic birch is really great stuff. And you can drill a quarter inch hole, you put that in there, and you put it in your vise, and you crank it, and it just presses it in. Now, oftentimes it won't be exactly straight. It might be just a little bit off. So what you do, and I'll show you this. Um, well, it'll take quite a while to tear all that apart. Let me show you what I do. There's nothing more disconcerting than to slap a number two Morse taper, you know, um, drill truck in here, and while you're working on it, all of a sudden it starts to ease out of the headstock. Very uncomfortable. Um, you're grasping for the stop button, and you're trying to hold everything together. Packard is the only one that I know of that sells these drill chucks with a hole for a quarter twenty draw rod. And you put that through and then you tighten this down and it will hold this in the draw in the headstock and it's not going to float out of there. When you get ready to take it out, you have to take a dead blow hammer, just tap it hard and it'll pull out. Anyway, that's just a a good feature, a good way of doing that. Now how am I in time? You're fine. Okay. Um Here's a couple more that I've just sort of glued up. What I'll do is I'll take a washer about the size I want and I'll put it on there and I'll draw a line. And that's a guide for me. When I put it in the drill, drill chuck, I put it in and then I'll turn it round and I'll turn it at an angle so that I get a bit of a cone shape and I stop where that line is. It's not absolutely critical that it that it be so many inches here or here. It's just something that looks aesthetically well and it works for you. And so that's, the, that's what you want to end up with. And you've got um, 30 cents invested in the drill bit, scrap wood, and you put it in, finish it like that. And when you're done with it, because this thing might have been in a little bit off, part it and true up the end and true up the top. That's just a, just it, you don't have to, but I you know, want it to be right. All right, then you take the world's neatest stuff, shoe goo. You can buy shoe goo at CVS. You can buy Kiwi boot repair at Surplus City. Anything that is like that, that is good to work with uh, neoprene or rubber or whatever, is what you want to use to glue it together. Now, the next step you want to do is glue up some rubber onto this. And it doesn't, what you do is you put the shoe goo on the, on the block of wood and then set it down on the piece of foam that you cut out. Bandsaw is great for cutting foam, cuts it like butter, works every time. It doesn't matter if the shoe goo goes out over the edge because you're going to cut that away. Then what is really kind of neat is, uh, I'm going to pass this around. This is really nice stuff. And I got this at Surplus City just last week. They hadn't had it before. This is the other material that works well. It's a gardener's pad, $1.99. It's 
So that's a, that's a good, the, the foam has to be somewhat firm. You can use a mushier one if you want to. It just reacts a little differently. Okay, the next thing you do is you get Velcro or you get leather. You can get leather from Tandy or someplace from the scrap pile of a thin leather. You see that? And what you do is you glue that on with um, 77, you know, 3M spray adhesive. The Velcro, and I've got this also in the handout, comes from Cleanspore Woodworking. And Cleanspore has a 2x4 sheet of Velcro that has got the adhesive already on it, and it sells for about $14, $15. And you cut that up and you put that on there. Then, this is the neatest part of it. And I'm not sure, I think I can do it with this setup. And you're saying, well, why does he go to all that effort to make those things? Well, it's not the cost. In the cost of buying a uh, sandpaper holder is about $10. But when you're done with this, they're about $1.50 for everything. The idea is that you want to make up one for literally like each grit that you have. And I'm going to hand this around in a way because this is kind of crazy. But these happen to be color coded. So like the rainbow, you know, red, yellow, green, blue. Red is 80 grit. Yellow is 120. Blue is, or green is like 180 and then blue is 320, okay? Now you don't have to peel them off each time. All you do, I'll hand these around. It's really tough when you're wearing bifocals, jeez. Um, what you wanna do is make up several of those and use the, there's a couple of things here that are really kinda neat. What you want to do is use the quick chuck, which you can get. I'm not sure if Packard has them up, but I know Craft Supplies has it. And you put that in your drill, and then you put these, these little devils right here in them like that. Okay? The other part, and you can switch them out real quick, is that you can put an extension type. So if you're trying to get down in something, you get the same. Whoop, sorry. That's good. But that little little device is, they're real handy and they're like five bucks. Uh, and then to do this right, and again, I think this will work. This is without putting a drill chuck in. These one way chucks are just remarkable. <laughs> you can do virtually anything with them. I'm not sure it's going to do this though. Maybe Bernie and I will uh, pick up a collection and get you a mark. A big mark. Why would I want something made in England when I can get something made in Canada? Right, Mike? Okay, now, this is the part that is really kind of neat using this one way live center. And I'm almost at the end here, but I want you to see this because it really is neat. You put this on as a guide because it's pretty hard sometimes to judge three inches or two inches. And so you make a guide that is three inches. All right? And you move this up. And it doesn't have to be tight because all you want is a guide. You want to know, how am I going to do this exactly and get 
get a nice three inch circle out of that. And with that guide and a skew chisel, well, I want this one. Okay. All right, you got the camera on that pretty well? Yep. Okay, you want to go in at an angle. All right? And I got it about 1,000, 1,200. And you just want to go in at an angle. not bad. You can then if you want to you can sand it. Oh, It helps to move that. And I'll just hand that around. The Velcro is clean spore and it's already got the adhesive on it. But you can see, man, is that ever, is that ever sweet or what? You know, I mean, just, <laughs> just comes off and you can use the, for the leather, use the PSA adhesive backed disc because there's nothing worse than peeling those off and invariably they get covered with sawdust or chips and they don't stick worth a darn. But if you've got, you know, three or four of those, and you got the PSA in different grits, put it on there, and after the sandpaper has worn off or worn out, then you peel it off. You're not changing it after sanding for five minutes with this and then five minutes with that. So, um, I also make them for, for two inch, and it's just a matter of cutting a smaller cone use the same uh, Harbor Freight uh, drives and just make them smaller and then I made myself a little two inch guide and I put that on and follow it down and it's really handy especially on the inertia type uh, things if you're using something da you know dainty so any questions about that um, yeah right that's why you know Bill, Bill Denton or Bill uh, at, at the Denton Turners did something like that. But I haven't seen anybody do the three inch guide, which provides uniformity. And I think the important thing is knowing where to get the resources. You know, trying to figure out where to get Velcro is really not easy to do. And you track that down. And then the idea of the Harbor Freight, we didn't have, we didn't have Harbor Freight 20 years ago. So those drill bits were, you know, major investment and it wasn't uh, as cost effective as it is today. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're, they're handy as candy. You know, have a couple of them. I got carried away and uh, broke down and went to Grizzly and bought three DeWalt drills that I hang. And it's almost like less being on production, you know. <laughs> Don't have to pull around. Anyway, that's my uh, two cents worth for today. I hope you have something that you could take away. That was the whole point of this. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And like I say, I've got about 10 handouts up here that has the information. Um, and Larry said he's going to put it on the internet. So we'll be in good shape. So thank you. Thank you.